how we'll talk today about how, about how if you try to inject privacy uh, technologies into uh, strategic environments, the effect can oftentimes be, be the exact opposite of what you might think that it should be. So I think it's no surprise here if I tell everyone privacy concerns affect your behavior. Um, and we found, in fact, people who, who uh, browse online actually do take steps to avoid having their uh, behavior observed. But these days, behavior is really data. Um, and so if you think about the uh, choices that you make in your life, browsing online, using apps, you actually control the data that you create. And you can actually create, create uh, different data by, for example, changing your browsing behavior or even deleting history. And in past work I showed with some, with some um, co-authors that in general, you really can't make meaningful inferences from the choice data of uh, people who have privacy uh, concerns. And so if you want to make use of this data, then you really have to do something about the privacy concerns individuals have. And so you might think, maybe I can just inject some privacy uh, technology that can uh, limit the way individuals' information is going to be used or shared. And if so, does this solve the uh, problem? And also, how does my choice of a privacy uh, technology affect people's uh, behavior? And so that'll be the main question that we ask here. And we'll ask it in a, a simple economic model of uh, data-driven decision-making. And we'll ask if we control informational flow among uh, players in a game, how does this affect behavior in equilibrium? So we'll have a simple uh, two-period model with uh, three players. We're going to have a consumer, a seller, and a lender. And the consumer is going to arrive, and her type is going to be a pair. <coughs> She'll have a value for the good being sold in the first day, and she's also going to have a type that describes which of the two loans are going to be better for, for her. Um, so here, she has the option to buy a, a smart investing magazine at some, at some uh, posted price P. And then the next day, she's going to be shown either this uh, very nice looking loan or this very uh, sketchy looking loan. And her type here is basically whether she is a credit worthy or not. And an important fact here is that this bank would like to uh, condition the loan that it shows based upon how she values this good. So uh, for example, if you have a high value for, for, for a smart investing ma magazines, then you're probably also, also a, a credit worthy person and should be shown this loan. In this game, Alice is, Alice is going to see her, to know her uh, type, see the price, and also know that she's playing this more uh, complicated game. And so here in, in this example, she's going to buy. We're not going to allow the bank to see her exact uh, behavior because we're trying to inject some uh, privacy here. So instead, we're going to uh, toss a coin and with some chance, we're going to change her buy choice into a not buy signal. And oops, that ha happened here, and so probably she's going to be shown this uh, bad loan. And the privacy policy here is the uh, probability that we change her, her uh, choice into the opposite. Um, and so here, this bit that we uh, we make is going to be correct with probability Q and is going to be flipped with probability 1 minus Q. And this Q is going to parameterize our privacy policy. And the main question here is um, how does this game's equilibrium change as we vary the privacy policy? And if it was very simple, then this wouldn't be worth having a paper or a talk. And so in fact, I will show you 
that it's uh, not at all obvious how things change as a function of a privacy parameter. So a spoiler alert for how things are going to go. Um, as we increase accuracy of the signal, so, so, so we're going to raise Q to send a more accurate signal, which seems like it should be more privacy. Um, some uh, very surprising things are going to happen. So first, um, um, as we increase privacy uh, protections, more information is going to be leaked about the uh, consumer's type. And also, the consumer can be less happy, and the bank can be more happy as we're, as we're increasing uh, privacy. And in general, everyone's uh, payoff in this game can be non-monotone and even not uh, continuous as a function of the privacy parameter. And in general, equilibria don't even have to, to exist. So you might think, think uh, naively, I'm going to give people privacy because that se seems good. And here we show that might not be the right thing to uh, do. And actually, there's a whole bunch of different, different, different uh, cases in practice that can fall into this framework. And really, any time where the firm uh, tomorrow is going to uh, take a risk on the uh, consumer can be captured in this. For example, maybe if you buy a AAA, then you should be given lower uh, car insurance prices. Maybe if you're a, a good student, then you get jobs, so on. Today, I will phrase things in terms of, of your of your shopping <coughs> choices and loans, but really, if you don't like that, pick your uh, favorite example. So here's the uh, formal model. On the first day, the uh, consumer is going to just interact with the seller. And the consumer's value is going to be drawn from some uh, common prior F. And, the, and there's going to be a, a posted price P for a for a um, s s s for the good, and the seller is a, a strategic agent here. And the consumer is going to make a choice that will create a bit B, which is one if she buys, zero if not. And we're going to flip that bit to create the uh, noisy bit B hat that's going to be correct with probability Q. On day two, the same uh, consumer is going to is going to um, interact with a lender. And she can have, have uh, two possible types. And here, think of T1 as being the, uh, the good type. And there's also going to be two, two, two loans. And think of loan A as being, as being the uh, better loan. And her type on day two is uh, positively <coughs> correlated with her value for the good. So if you have a high value for the good on the first day, then you're more likely to be the, the uh, high type tomorrow. And the consumer gets a uh, delta bonus if she's shown the uh, better loan. But the bank would prefer to uh, screen the uh, consumers based upon their types. So if they show add one to a consumer of type T1, then they're going to get this as their surplus, and um, so on for all four possible assignments. And they would prefer to show to show the uh, high type, the good ad, and the low type, the bad ad. And so here's the uh, cheat sheet of things happening here. T1 is the good type, and loan A is a good loan. And if you have a high value for the good on the first day, then you're more likely to be the high type, type tomorrow. And so the bank is more likely to want to show you the uh, better loan. So now for a fixed Q, for a fixed privacy policy, we can just solve this game by a backwards induction. It's pretty simple. <clears throat> and an important fact in this process is that for, uh, for all equilibria, 
there's a, a cutoff value v star, where on the first day, uh, consumers who have a value above v, v star buy the good, and those who have a lower value don't. And because uh, consumers are smart and they know that they're playing this more uh, complicated game, this, this uh, V star might not be the same as a price that, that's, that's posted. So, so, that, so then in uh, period two, the bank is gonna see the uh, realization of the noisy signal B hat, and they're also gonna know the uh, privacy policy Q and they can also solve for the V star. And so they're just going to see the uh, realization of the uh, consumer's signal, and they're gonna compute their uh, posterior and do the best thing for them based upon their uh, posterior. So they know if I offer the consumer <coughs> loan A, then I'll get this bonus times the, <coughs> times the uh, posterior pro probability that the high type, um, plus uh, this bonus if the consumer is not. And so they can just, can just uh, compute if it's better for them to show, th to show the uh, good loan or the bad loan. And you can uh, rearrange terms and see that really this is just a, a condition on th the lender's pos posterior being above some uh, threshold hold value that just depends on these four, four, four terms. And so from now on, in the talk, I'll phrase everything in terms of this eta, since that's actually the, uh, the one thing that, that describes how the lender is going to decide which loan to show. And so depending on the lender's posterior, we're either going to be in a pooling or a uh, separating equilibrium here. <clears throat> and if we pool, things are pretty simple. Everyone is gonna get the same loan, regardless of the bit or their behavior. And so if that's the case, then you shouldn't really uh, take into account the fact that you're playing this more uh, complicated game, because what you do in the first day doesn't affect your payoff tomorrow. And so here, the uh, consumers behave myopically, and they're gonna buy the good if and only if their value is above the price. Knowing this, the uh, seller is just gonna post the uh, monopoly price. And so then the two types of uh, pooling equilibria will exist exactly when this behavior satisfies the uh, conditions on the uh, posterior. And so this says that for both possible realizations of this noisy bit B, when consumers behave myopically and the seller posts post the uh, monopoly price, the, 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 then uh, these equilibria <coughs> exist whenever the lender wants to treat both uh, realizations of this noisy bit B hat in the same way, when he wants to show them both the same loan. And so that's kind of boring. <coughs> now if consumers <laughs> separate, we see some uh, more interesting behavior here. Because now the loan terms that the, the, that the consumer has offered will depend on her purchase. And so she can now uh, take this into account when making her period one choice. <clears throat> and so she can compare her total surplus in this game um, across both, both um, across, across both periods, and then decide to buy or not based upon that. So this says, th says that she'll buy exactly when her surplus from buying today, plus the uh, probabilistic bonus that she gets, uh, gets, gets uh, that she gets in uh, period two, is above what she gets if she doesn't buy now, so she gets zero. And then there's a one minus Q chance 
that her no bit gets flipped into a yes and she'll then be shown the uh, better loan. And if the, and if the, and if the um, distribution on values has full support, then in fact this must hold with equality for the marginal buyer, and so V star is going to solve this. Knowing this, the uh, seller is going to post a price to maximize their profits, given that this is how our consumers behave. And so again, a, a separating equilibrium will exist whenever the uh, posteriors induced by this behavior cause the bank to want to, to, want to treat different uh, realizations of the, of the consumer's signal differently. But this has all been for a fixed queue. Um, we really want to know how does the outcome of this game change as we vary Q. So imagine if we increase Q, which means less privacy. So I'm going to send a more accurate signal, which sounds like less privacy. So this is going to change the uh, cutoff value for the buyers. And it's going to cause it to uh, decrease. And so, and so this B hat is going to be correct with higher probability, but we're simply sending a different signal. It has different content. And you see here, we're really uh, partitioning the uh, consumer space in two different ways. And it's not clear without knowing more about the game, about the game parameters, who prefers which uh, partition of the consumers? Uh, and I think here, in a sense, consumers are really buying themselves privacy here. Because really, as we push down this uh, cutoff value, it means that more consumers are buying. Which means also, more consumers are buying at a price above their value. And so they're basically taking a loss in the first <laughs> period to ensure that they get higher payoffs later. And so really, they're basically buying the right to send a more favorable signal about themselves. <clears throat> so for my last few slides, I'll talk about a, a particular um, example of this game. And I'll instantiate um, parameters as follows. So the values are going to be drawn from just a, a uniform prior. And there's going to be a, a linear correlation between, between, between the values and the types. So this says if your value is V, then the probability that you are the high type is V. And also, uh, consumers are going to receive a, a delta bonus for being shown the more favorable loan terms. In this game here, I plot, on, I, I plot the uh, mutual information as a function of the privacy policy. So here, when Q is a 0.5, then we're basically always going to flip this bit with probability half. And so I'm just sending uh, complete noise. Um, and so this is also complete privacy for the uh, consumer. Over here, Q equals 1. And so I'm going to send a perfectly accurate signal about your behavior. And so this is no privacy. And I plot here, this is the uh, mutual information between the bank's posterior and prior, which is really capturing quantitatively how much information is consumed, how much information is contained in the signal about the uh, consumer's type. And of course, the most uh, surprising thing here is that this information is U-shaped. It's not going to be monotone in the privacy parameter. And the reason why you see this is because, again, the uh, consumers change their behavior to account for the, to account for the new privacy policy. And in fact, here at the extreme, in this game, 
we see that um, all consumers purchase the good regardless of their value. And so I'm sending a perfectly accurate signal that contains absolutely no information. And this actually looks like a uh, thought experiment that uh, macroeconomists have done about the optimal tax rate. Um, so they imagine if I want to maximize tax dollar revenue, what's the right tax rate, rate to set? And at the extremes, if your tax rate is on zero, then of course, then of course you uh, don't make, make like any tax dollars. But if the tax rate is one, then you're going to tax people's entire salary and so they have no incentive to work. And so again, they sort of modify their behavior to account for the changing policy. And so if you want to actually maximize, maximize tax dollars, you really want to pick some spot in the middle. And so this is really what we see here for, for our privacy as well, is that actually there's a sweet spot in the middle, and it's because people <laughs> modify their behavior to account for the change in policy. Now in the same game, here is, here is the, uh, here is the uh, banks, banks, banks pay off. Again, I plot here, the same thing. This is a privacy policy for, ranging from, ranging from a complete privacy to a no privacy. And it's also U-shaped, but it peaks at a different point. Um, here it peaks at about, say, 0.78, and here it peaks at about 0.83. And I think the exact, the exact uh, values here are not particularly interesting, but I think it is exciting to see that the bank is really doing something different than just trying to learn about the uh, consumers. And so they're really doing something more, 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 more complicated. And so again, if you want to help the banks, maybe you don't just want to help them learn everything there is to know about the uh, consumers. And in the same game, again, here's a two different data values. And recall, this is the value of, of the uh, cutoff on the lenders a posterior for when they show the uh, better ad. And here again, I plot the uh, privacy level, ranging from complete privacy to 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 uh, to no privacy. And I show here the uh, payoffs of all three players in this game as a function of the privacy policy. So the blue is the consumer, the red is the seller, and the black is the lender. And again, I think the exact. The exact values are not particularly exciting. But what is interesting to see is, for example, here there, there's a no equilibria, and there can also be very large uh, discrete jumps in the consumers and the players' payoffs. And these jumps come, come from the fact that we're changing equilibrium types. So here, we're at a, a pooling equilibrium, and then we switch to a, a separating one. And so if you're a privacy policy maker, you might want to say, how should I best set my privacy level? And it really depends on who you're trying to help here. Right here, if you want to help the uh, consumer, it'll be this value. If you're trying to help the uh, seller, it would be this value, and if you're trying to help the bank, it would be in between. And you also might think, well, I really want people to have more uh, privacy, and so I'm just gonna bump up uh, privacy a bit more. You know? And so you might move from, say, uh, this equilibrium to here, where there's briefly no equilibria to here, where you change to a pooling one. And so if you want to sort of 
make small tweaks to a privacy policy, it might actually have a very large impact on the outcomes. So the main takeaways from this are that, in fact, naively adding heading privacy to a uh, strategic environment may not have the outcome that you think it will. And so these privacy policy makers should really be uh, taking into account the effects of incentives and, uh, and of um, equilibrium. And also probably a policymaker wants to add privacy to, uh, to help a certain person, right? right? I mean, maybe they think that uh, consumers deserve privacy or to like increase banks' ability to uh, smartly choose loans, things like this. And they really have to choose their privacy policy, taking into account who they want to help with this. And also, I've oftentimes times I've presented this and everyone says, well, you know, I don't think it's practical to really add noise into these environments. Can you imagine a company doing this? Well, actually, this shows they might want to. Um, and so we actually might want to think about what, about what that privacy means. It's no longer just a binary, am I sharing information or not, but there's actually a smooth continuum, and the firms themselves might want to be somewhere in the middle. And so I think, and so I think that, that, that this really opens up a lot of new um, questions. Here, I'm really only telling you, this is something to uh, consider, but I don't have any broader or more, or, or more uh, structured advice beyond that. Um, and so I think that there's a lot of work to be done in, in the future of looking at uh, specific uh, game environments that arise in practice and offering more uh, structured advice there. Thanks.